When you know it is God's will to heal you, it becomes easier to receive your healing from Jesus. Join Kenneth Copeland on the Believer's Voice of Victory today and become established in the truth that healing is absolutely for you. Let's open our Bibles this morning to um, Matthew chapter 8, verse 2, please. We're going to look at this three different accounts. If you search Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there are 19 individual healings. Now, of course, there's a lot, you know, there's multitudes of people were healed in the ministry of Jesus. Now, it looks like more than that, but like this one, this is recorded three different times. But there are 19 individual healings. And it's, oh, what a, what a marvelous study to see people receive from Jesus. And I want you to see this morning just how easy it is to receive from Him. In the second uh, verse, Matthew 8, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Now, there are millions upon millions upon millions of Christian people today that have this same problem. They know he can, but is it his will? Well, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Look what Jesus said. I will. (laughs) I will. He's no respecter of persons. If he ever said that to anybody, then he says that to everybody. Because he is the will of God in action for all men for all time. Glory to God. You missed a place to shout right there. (laughs) Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now, Mark chapter 1. And we'll look at the 40th verse. There came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, if you will, you can make me clean. Now, Mark adds this comment. Jesus moved with compassion put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. Now we'll look in Luke chapter 5. In the um, 12th verse, Luke 5, 12, it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. Now, Luke being a physician, he, he gives deep, more detail in, in several places about sick people. So the, the, Dr. Luke let us know he's in stage four. He's full of leprosy. In other words, he's, he's, he's dying. It's all over him. My goodness. My, my, my. Now, who seeing Jesus fell on his face. Now we see something. We see from these accounts that he kneeled and worshiped him And then at at some moment there, he just fell on his face. It's 
because you see, those two, those two writers don't contradict one another. Both of them are right. He, he kneeled and then he just fell on his face, worshiping him. This sounds like it only took, you know, uh, 10 seconds. We don't know how long this went on. We don't know how long he just worshiped him and just worshiped him and worshiped him. Moved with compassion. Jesus moved with compassion. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Now, let's take a look at this. A man in stage four leprosy. Can you imagine how nasty and filthy those old leprous sores all over him, probably open running sores? Nobody's had anything to do with this man for years, except another leper. Nobody would dare touch him. But compassion did. Does that say something to you? Oh, it does to me. (laughs) I tell you, the compassion of God, the compassion of Jesus himself. Glory to God. And now the, now the man's on his face. So Jesus, I, 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 I just see him. I can just see him just, just get down there right in the dirt with him. <laughs> and, you know, and just get right in his face and say, what one translation says, of course I will. Isn't that good? Amen. Of course I will. That's what he's saying to you this morning. Of course I will. And now you and I are on this side of the cross. Amen. He bore our sickness. He carried our pain. Amen. And he's saying the same thing to you and me this morning. Of course I will. What's he saying? Of course it's my will. Absolutely my will. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you imagine how ridiculous it would be to have the idea that Jesus bore our sicknesses and carried our pains in his own body on the tree and then say it's not God's will to heal today? Let me ask you something. Does God ever change? Did you know his name's not God? That came out of German theology. God. Oh, he's got a lot of names. And in the English Bible, we, we, it's just God this and God that and God this. But he is Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. His name is healing. So when did he change his name? He didn't. (laughs) He didn't. He had theologians take care of that for him. And they really screwed it up (laughs) because he's never changed. He is the Lord that healeth thee. Well, yes, Brother Copeland, but you see that was in the Old Testament and that was for the Jews. Well, what about the other 11 tribes? Huh? (laughs) I like that. (laughs) Huh? Yeah. Jew is just short for Judah. No, it's not the Jews. It's the seed of Abraham. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if the new covenant is a better covenant with better promises, 
We didn't get cut out. We got more of it. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody got healed of asthma right then, just while I was talking. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, suck some good clean air down in those heel lungs right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I got healed of that when I was a little boy. I know, I know what that's like when I was just a little guy for, for a short time. Praise God. But thank God. I thank God for mothers that pray. Amen. Now, my daddy was a praying man, but you know, <laughs> Mama was serious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, while dad's out working, she's praying. And uh, she, she prayed polio off of me when I was a little kid. I, I'm telling you, that's amazing. Yeah. And uh, this is back during the time when polio was just, and, and I, I had a, a good friend. She, she was a little bit, a few years older than me. And uh, that horrible disease attacked her. Well, I was in bed with what they thought was the flu. And I had a stack of magazines laying on, the, on my bed there. I was, a, oh, 12 probably. I don't, I don't think it's any older than that. 10, 10, to, 10 to 12, something like that. And, and, and I, but I was feeling better. And my magazines were stacked down there. And so I decided, well, I'm going to get one of my magazines. And I couldn't. I want to know why can't I? Why can't I make my body move? I'm propped up in the bed, but I'm wanting to reach over there and get my magazines, but my, my, my body not working. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, you know, man, I hollered mama. She came running in there and I told her. Well, it never occurred to me. Polio never occurred to me. I, I, I just couldn't figure out what was happening to me. Man, I'm telling you, she hit her knees and she didn't get up. She stayed right there until I could pick up that magazine. Amen. Amen. We were in, uh, we were preaching in Sweet Pro Louisiana, Gloria and me. This is back in the very early days of our, our ministry. And um, I had, I was hold, holding a meeting in Life Tabernacle. And Life Tabernacle was Carolyn Savell's home church. And it was in the same, at the same time that Jerry Savell got saved in, in the meeting. It wasn't this particular meeting, but it was in that same church. And uh, uh, let's see, Jerry had accepted the Lord the, the next time I was there, I believe. Anyway, I checked in there on Sunday night. The meeting started on Monday morning. And I felt a, a tightness uh, that night in church, Sunday night. And uh, we were just sitting there in the, in the pew, particularly during the, during the worship service. They had, whoa, they had one of the greatest piano players I've ever heard in my life. And um, Anna Jean Price, oh, I tell you, she's, she's something. And I'm, I'm just enjoying the music and, uh, and I felt this thing kind of tight in, in, inside my leg. But I didn't pay any attention to it much. And the next morning when I got up, oh man, I had pain. It was, oh, and it just kept getting worse. And, and it started moving down my leg and lodged in there somewhere above my, right inside my leg there above my knee. And it got so bad, I'd walk out on the platform under the anointing and the pain would leave. I'd step off that platform and there was one time I stepped off the platform and I screamed out loud before I could stop it. Mm. It just, just slammed me with the, the worst pain that I'd ever had up to that time. Mm. Well, I won't go through all the things, but that, that happened day after day after day and got worse and worse and worse. Well, this was during the days 
and we, we didn't have an airplane yet, and so we were still riding the airlines. And uh, this is back when the oh, Love Field was in what was the airport. DFW didn't exist. So we uh, got to the uh, gate and oh man, we're sitting on that, in that airline seat coming, and I'll tell you, me and I had leg just sitting there, thoom, 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 thoom. Man, I'm hurting. And I'm quoting every scripture I can think of. And just, you know, believe in God, believe in God, standing on the word of God. You're not doing this to me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so I just, just took my stand, just bit down on it. What Gloria called bulldog faith. All right, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. The mascot at KCBC is bulldogs. We got bulldog faith. <laughs> Amen. So, and the devil said, it's a mile from that gate up to the terminal to get your luggage, and I'm going to kill you. He said, I'm going to kill you with that. I said, no, you ain't, you ain't killing anybody. We got off of the airplane. There was a guy standing there. Nobody called him. He was standing there with a wheelchair. He said, you need this. That wheelchair looks so good. Oh man. I said, no, thank you. Heal men don't need wheelchair. And it was just about a, just about a, a mile walk from that. It was the furthest gate from the terminal where that airplane parked. And I was like, oh Jesus, here we go. So my dad and mom picked me up, picked us up and, at the airport. And uh, I said, uh, we had to go past their house to get out to our house. I said, Daddy, I, let's go home. I said, let's go to your house. I, I don't want them. I, I don't. I don't want to stay in this car for long enough to get to my house. He said, Okay. So they just stopped there at the house. And uh, I went back in that back bedroom, which was my bedroom for when I lived at home. And by this time, it's about oh, you know. It's about midnight, I guess, by the time I got in bed. And, and I got in bed and fell off to sleep. Now, Mama sat down in a chair right there at the end of my bed, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. Like I told you last night, Mama would say, hit it in tongues, boy, hit it in tongues. Yeah. Man, I mean, she sound like a machine. <laughs> Praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit, praying in the spirit, <laughs> and and I, I I went off to sleep. About three o'clock, I sat straight up in bed. I mean, just just sat straight up in bed. Mother said, "That did it. Good night." <laughs> Every symptom gone. <laughs> now I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody, somebody in here that God's been dealing with you to do that and you haven't been doing it. She, my, my grandfather had, had malignant tumors across the back of his shoulders and um, he'd been in the hospital, but they, they just sent him home. And she's sitting up with him. Guess what she's doing? <laughs> oh, she's praying. And, and she fell off to sleep and, and, he, and he woke her up and she, it, it frightened her at first. She, she thought she'd let him die. And she woke up and he was out of the bed and he's doing this. She said, Papa, what are you doing? He said, I'm getting rid of this cancer. <laughs> she said, you getting rid of the cancer? He said, yeah. She, and he said, this is what Jesus told me to do. And he's doing this. She said, why? He said, I don't know. He's standing right there. Ask him. <laughs> 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 
totally healed. Amen. Totally healed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. God. Praise God. It is the perfect will of God to heal the sick. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Besuchen Sie kcm-de.org oder wählen Sie 07621 422 2861, um mehr über Kenneth Copeland Ministries zu erfahren, um Gebet zu bitten und auch glaubensstärkendes Material zu finden. Kontaktieren Sie Freunde und Partner auf Facebook bei Kenneth Copeland Ministries auf Deutsch. Vergessen Sie bis zum nächsten Mal nicht, Gott liebt Sie und Jesus ist Herr.